Let's talk about these developments with Peter Drobak, an infectious disease and global health expert at the University of Oxford in England. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on, Peter. Good morning. Well, we just heard the next essential step is contact tracing, uh, along with hygiene and social distancing to control the spread, Peter. Um, how important is contact tracing? It's incredibly important and it goes hand in hand with testing, right? Once everybody who needs a test can get a test, we're able to identify a positive case, trace all of their contacts, and then get everyone who needs it either isolated or quarantined. That's how we can break chains of transmission and have really smart surveillance. That allows us to be much smarter in opening up and, and prevent that, that dreaded second surge. Yeah, oh, I was gonna ask you that. If it's an accomplished uh, in a major way, it could, you think? prevent a second wave? I think so. It's certainly the best shot that we've got. And if you look at the uh, the places that have done a good job first in crushing the curve and stopping community transmission, and then for the most part, keeping it down. Now, of course, we've seen blips here and there in places like uh, China, in places like Korea, in places like Singapore, uh, but Australia, New Zealand, et cetera, all of them have something in common, which is uh, widespread testing, widespread contact tracing, and then measures for isolation and quarantine. I think that has to be at the forefront of all of our efforts right now. Well, meantime, we know that 48 states are reopening, and uh, there were warnings that states were reopening too soon, like right here in Georgia, uh, that we were going to see these massive spikes. We haven't seen that yet. Instead, the, in Georgia, the number of deaths and hospitalizations are actually going down. What do you make of that, Peter? Well, those of us who predicted that cases would go up would love to be proven wrong here, but really it's a mixed picture across the country. So for every place like Georgia, where the cases haven't gone up um, after things have been relaxed, you see other places like Texas, Arizona, Minnesota, where in parts you do see the numbers of cases rising uh, as we expected. Something to keep in mind is because in a lot of places we're not doing enough testing, uh, we have to wait for people to become sicker and hospitalized before those cases are detected. That means Means there's a three or four week lag from the time we make a change until we till we actually see a change. So it may be that we're just too early uh, and we'll have to see what happens over the next couple of weeks. It's a very critical period right now. Right. In the next couple of weeks, uh, the predictions are that some 10,000 more Americans could die. Uh, uh, meantime, bigger picture here. President Trump launched Operation Warp Speed this week, promising that millions of doses of coronavirus vaccines, that's the goal, they hope will be available by the end of this year. There certainly is merit in working to act fast right now, but is the president's timeline realistic? It's an incredibly optimistic timeline. I think that most estimates that I've seen from the scientific community who are working um, uh, in, in the race to develop a vaccine would give it a, a longer timeline, even in a best case scenario, right? Uh, we have to remember that there's never been an effective vaccine against a coronavirus, that the timeline for developing a new vaccine normally is years, often a decade or more. We think it's gonna be substantially less. If all the stars align, everything goes perfectly, they work, there's no speed bumps, possibly early 2021. But I think that's a, you know, that's the most optimistic scenario. And we have to also be prepared for scenarios in which it takes much longer um, to find a vaccine that's going to be effective. And that's why, while this development is really important, these investments in the in the scientific race are important, we also need an operation warp speed to make sure that every American can get a test who needs a test. We need an operation warp speed to make sure that we have armies of contact tracers along with technology in every part of the country, because that's what's going to allow us to save lives and save the economy until that vaccine is ready. Good point there you make, and we'll end on that. Thanks so much, Peter Drobak.